Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record the output of a track in Reaper. Now you're probably wondering, why would you want to record the output of a track? But there are a few good reasons. For one thing, you could print effects that are on tracks to turn them into finished audio that would require no plugins to play back. We can also create multiple takes with a different effect on each, so we can compare and archive them in case you want to try something different. We could also convert virtual instrument plugins or synths to be audio if we need them as static audio files or if we just want to save the CPU processing. And finally, we could print automation or effects created with automation to audio as well, just by recording the output of our tracks. I have a track in front of me here that's a guitar, and I have some effects on the track, but it sounds like this without them. I have a chorus effect. A delay, and a reverb. Let's say I want to print these effects with the guitar on their own piece of audio. We could do that by recording the output of this track. Now, a different way of doing this is to render it to a separate track by right clicking over here and go to render and choose from these options or we could freeze tracks if we prefer but sometimes we just want to record the output of our track so let's go to our track and right over here are the track recording modes by default we normally record the input but we could also record the output now this effect is stereo so we should probably choose to output stereo. Then we should go to input monitoring and make sure it's off. Because if monitoring is on, you might accidentally record your input along with the output. And we just want to record what's on the track, not the input. So leave these two options off. But we do need to turn on this option. Monitor track media when recording. This needs to be on so Reaper can record what's on the same track. Otherwise, it won't record anything. So now, just go into record, and we can record the guitar along with the effects. And just like that, we printed the audio or the guitar with the effects. So if we turn off the effects here, which we have to do, otherwise we're going to hear the effects twice, we're still going to hear it on this audio. And if you notice, it recorded takes. So if we hit the T key, it switches from the dry guitar to the guitar with effects. So we can keep both options if we want. And we could also save multiple versions with different effects on each take. Let me give an example. In this project, I have a different guitar. It also has some track effects, but if we turn them off, it sounds like this. But like the other guitar, I have a delay and a reverb. But I also created some automation using volume and pan. If I hit V, we can see the volume automation on this track. And it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
creating a tremolo effect. And I also created some pan automation right down here, which sounds like this. So now if I wanted, I could save multiple versions with each one of these effects. For example, let's turn off the pan and the volume, but leave on the reverb and delay. Now let's print that to its own take. Switch this again to record output. And again, we'll use stereo. Turn on monitor track media when recording. Now we can record that reverb and delay to its own take. But now let's switch back to the first take, turn on the volume automation or the tremolo, and let's print that to another take. So this one has reverb, delay, and tremolo. Let's create another one by going back to take one and turn on the pan. So this take will have everything. Reverb, delay, tremolo or volume automation, and pan automation. And let's print that to another take. So now we have four options. Let's turn off the envelopes and the effects and here each one. Take one is dry. Take two has reverb and delay. Take three has reverb, delay, and the tremolo or volume automation. And take four has reverb, delay, volume automation, or tremolo, and panning. So it's a great way of saving all the effects in different ways. So we could choose from them later. Now let's take a look at printing some virtual instrument plugins using MIDI. I have a piano track right here. Let's say I wanted to print this to audio. Once again, we could switch this to record output and choose stereo because the piano is stereo. Turn off monitor input and turn on monitor track media when recording. So I could print it just by going into record. And just like that, we printed the audio from our piano. So we could turn off the plugin right here, right click it, and choose to turn the effect offline so it doesn't use any processing. And I could play it back as audio. Which makes it a lot easier. If you want to do things like fade it, let's create a fade right here. That's a lot easier to do with audio. Let's also bring in a string part right here. And it sounds like this. Let's print to audio the string part. Switch this 
to output and stereo, turn on monitor track media when recording. Let's print the strings. And now we have the strings printed as audio. Although we can go back by switching takes back to the MIDI. But for now, let's stick with the audio. Because one of the benefits of printing this as audio is you can create fades a lot easier. Let's fade in the string part up to about here. That sounds more dramatic when it's fading in like that, which again is hard to do with MIDI. Let's do another one at bar three, split it, create a fade in right here, and put a fade out right here, and bring it over so it goes over or courses through the fade in. That sounds more dramatic to me, where we could bring in these fade ins and fade outs a lot easier with audio. So, anyway, that's how you record the output of a track in Reaper. It's really useful for printing effects, converting virtual instruments into audio, and also printing automation or effects created with automation in your productions. So, I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.